Hello and welcome to Oh The Horror. I'm Fedora, and I'm back! And I'm sorry if I was worrying everybody, I mean, uh, <clears throat> um... Hello and welcome to Oh The Horror. I'm... <sighs> yeah, so I'm, I'm clearly I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little worse off than I was before I left, but, um... Uh, I'm okay now, I'm back to the show, and thank you for everybody who was worried about me and wrote the comments and everything. And, um, <clears throat> yeah, and in celebration of me coming back to the show, let's do something that I've been meaning to do for quite some time. Sort of a, uh, a welcome back, if you will. Um, so yes, this is the uh, second edition of Oh The Horrors Full Moonathon. And we're going to start things off by closing a chapter on a book I opened the last time I did this. The Demonic Toys franchise. And despite having a 2 in its title, this is probably closer to the third entry in the series. I say that because Doll Man vs. Demonic Toys, released one year after the original, was far more of a sequel than this movie. Because not only did it have all four of the toys, not just the two that this movie pushes in, but it also starred Tracy Scogans, returning as Officer Jenny, or Judy, from the original Demonic Toys. So you're probably wondering why am I not reviewing that movie instead? Well, the answer to that is simple. So, this is 2010's... Demonic Toys 2. Personal Demons. So, this movie starts and they're only just now cleaning up the set after the first movie? Get your foot out, guys. Hey, this is kind of like how Bride of Chucky started. So, if this leads into a resulting sex scene between Tiffany and Baby Oopsie Daisy, that just brings even more traumatizing imagery. I can even shit my pants! Can you shit your pants? After fixing up the toys and packing them away, our faceless repairman is rewarded with 20 million... Bison dollars?! Ah, oh, god damn it! Then we cut over to our heroine for this movie, Caitlin, who if you squint, almost looks like Chloe Grace Moretz. She's here with beloved TV actor Leslie Jordan, who are here for some kind of meeting at this old castle, which has been set up by the Phantom of the Opera's creepy uncle here. My, my. All this time I've been speaking with you on the phone, I never realized I was connecting with such a classic beauty. So young, so nubile. Wow, he's like Vincent Price if he wasn't allowed within 200 meters of a primary school. We also have his gold-digging fiancé, and his kind of son, who is of course genetically engineered to be physically flawless. But even still, Caitlin is a little concerned about all the stories of paranormal phenomena occurring around the castle they're about to enter. I can assure you that I'm well taken care of in that department. This is Miss Lilith Demar. Good evening. Well, so long as the castle was built on an ancient Indian burial ground, I guess you're covered. Okay, so the creepy guy here, Dr. Lorca, is some kind of ancient toy expert who has come to see something that archaeologists found in the castle. No, not the demonic toys. No, he already owns those. It's actually this thing. It's beautiful. Boy, are they going to be disappointed when they find the Made in Taiwan sticker on its ass. Soon after, Lorca's employee runs inside and tells everyone that their cars have been stolen. Which leaves Zelda Rubenstein here to have a psychic prediction of the future after touching the doll. Oh god, I see a naked clown woman in body paint and a puppet with machine guns for tits. We have no transport, everyone is forced to spend the night in the old castle, and this gives time for the devil doll, a Divalito? Isn't he one of the Ninja Turtles? To wake up, yeah, but I guess he's just alive and sneak off to magically resurrect the demonic toys. Good job, Guido. I don't know where the hell you came from, but just remember, I'm in charge, and you won't get hurt. Fun fact! Did you know that Baby Oopsie Daisy in this movie is actually voiced by Joan of Arc from Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure? I didn't actually have a joke here, I just thought it'd be something you'd like to know. Hey, it's better than watching this cringy flirting attempt. Meet new people. Like you. Well, thank you very much. Uh, welcome very much. <laughs> Over to something a bit less painful, Lorca's thieving assistant, who tried to steal Divalito and replace him with a fake, 
is the first to fall prey to the toys, much to Divolito's apparent horror. Oh great, so he's another evil toy who doesn't like killing. How long before Oopsie Daisy and Jack Attack pull down his pants to see if he has a penis or not? Speaking of which, back with our cute couple, their romantic walk has led them to the castle torture chamber. Whoa guys, haha, <laughs> moving a little fast aren't we? Hey look dad, I can fit my whole arm into this thing. Ah, God, there goes my wanking hand. I'd like to invite everyone to gather in the living room this evening. Lilith would like to conduct a seance there. With your blessing, of course. Sure. Well, I suppose I can come as well. But try to have some decent catering there this time. I went to an exorcism last week. All they were serving was a bowl of lays. But before that, they find a staircase which leads further down than the torture chamber and opens up into the set of the descent. But then an earthquake strikes. I guess the physics from Sand Sharks was a little delayed. The quake seems to be caused by this painting which is inhabited by the ghost of a woman who used to own the castle centuries ago. And she quite literally pulls a Vigo the Carpathian on psychic Lilith. Fair warning though, if you plan on going after baby Oscar again, <laughs> you're on your own, those kids are fucking ninjas now. Meanwhile, our young heroes get spooked by the company logo and literally wind up at... Samara's well. Oh, but it's okay, I'm pretty sure she had a plane to catch. Prodigium Abyssus. It's a portal to hell. Oh, so Vanessa Angel and a Christmas Satan are gonna crawl out of it. They also find all of the old owner woman's creepy witch stuff. Like the Necronomicon. You got the wrong guy. Well, if we are gonna see Deadites soon, at least the toys have the right idea. Cut off their crappy CGI heads, that way they won't come back looking like the guys from I Am Legend. Okay, okay, what is the book really and what does it say? And, uh, do try to speak into the microphone so we can hear you. Jealousy. Insanity. Hatred. You don't actually believe there are monsters in these parts. So those pod things are the personal demons? Sounds a bit more like Charles Band does Pokemon. Anyway, we finally meet up for Lilith's seance. But of course, she's possessed now. And this kind of just annoys our heroes, who probably just want to go back down to the secret room and play with their balls. Little Zool here tells them to leave the castle or die. At least that's what I think she's saying. It's kind of hard to hear. She sounds like a deadite talking down a CB radio. Well, when threatening their lives doesn't scare them off, the next logical step is always... Uh, d dancing. Well, at least Al Pacino's enjoying himself. <laughs> but then the toys bust in, knives are blazing. But as we learned from the last time we talked about these guys, their one true weakness is bullets. Damn, how do the humans always know? But then Lorca figures talking toys could be worth quite a bit of money and wants to recapture them. Hmm. He wants to make more money from talking toys. Maybe this is what the meeting at Pixar went like back in 2014. Oh, come on, Mr. Lassiter. Toy Story 3 ended so well. Is more money really worth it to ruin that? <laughs> so anyway... Qualcomm PUNCH! Then sexy stepmom tries to shoot them too. I should have killed you off a long time ago. Just like my did your old man. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, she um, killed his real father apparently. She gets shot while they're fighting over the gun. And uh, what's that shit on her face? Is that where Jack Attack bit her a scene ago? It looks like he coughed up a hairball all over her. Everyone flees back to the underground chamber, and Lorca is back on his feet, and oh boy, does he sound angry. Oh, poor guy. He got hit so hard, he thinks he's a racing car. But then Oopsie Daisy pokes a hole in him, which makes this sound. And then the toys finally surround and attack the rest of the humans. But then, Sun character just does what I suggested two years ago, and just smashes all of the foot-tall toys with a shovel. Huh. Well, that was easy. 
but doing so summons the dreaded pasty white Satan, who pretty much just does what Baal did at the end of Puppet Master vs. Demonic Toys and takes the soul of the old castle owner lady back to hell with him. I will and you can help by donating to the upcoming Demonic Toys 3 Kickstarter campaign. Woo! So with the morning sun rising, and everyone helping out to clean up the set this time before they start filming some subspecies sequel here, this movie comes to an end with a shot of those ball things with the, uh, personal demons inside of them. Well, the movie was named after them, so they better do something pretty important at the end of this. It wouldn't have been any less accurate to call this movie Demonic Toys 2, Leslie Jordan's Pink Pajamas. They were about as significant. Well, that was Demonic Toys 2, Personal Demons. I'm certainly not going to claim the original Demonic Toys is flawless, but it was fun and interesting with a surreal style, diverse characters, and all the toys were pretty well puppeteered. This movie... it was just boring more than anything. Ignoring the fact that it only starred half the toys for some stupid reason, they're only in the movie for about 10 minutes, where well, they spend half of that just sort of standing around watching people. Plot-wise, I don't know, it was mostly just people waiting around. The toys didn't want anything this time either, they were just kind of there. And as for grumpy Mona Lisa here, she apparently only wanted everyone to fuck off. Sounds like a pretty in-depth movie. And that's all from me for tonight, so, I'm Fedora, this is Oh the Horror, save a screen for me, and we'll see you next time. Here every day. Wood is round up. Come on, it's time to play. There's Jesse the Oldland Cowgirl. Bullseye, he's Woody's horse. He's a smart. Pete the old prospector.